Good morning, sisters, brothers, friends, and family. How y'all doing this morning? Well, I just got out of my prayer closet. I was uh, praying and worshiping, and um, I, I just love the presence of God. While I'm laying in his presence and just worshiping, you know, I uh, I love to go beyond the veil, and what that means is, you know, you have the outer courts, the inner courts, the whole, uh, the most holy place, and then the holy of holies, and that's when, you know, when you tarry and you just stay there. You know, one thing I will share, I never glorify my past, but, you know, in my past, I was an addict and alcoholic for 26 years, and a function, and I made it to work, by the grace of God. But uh, anywho, I, I understand, and a lot of my friends that I was in the world with are now in the kingdom with me, and I'm excited about that. So, And we're friends on Facebook, so they can uh, testify to this, that, you know, when you're waiting around for those drugs to come in, and you, you know, uh, with Satan means for evil, God turns around for the good. So I know what it is to tarry and to wait, you know, till your drugs show up so you can get that next high. So, you know, through faith and patience, you inherit the promises. So I know what it is to patiently wait for something. So what Satan meant for my evil and destruction, I use now, you know, for God's glory in the kingdom. So God has graced me to be able to tarry and to wait till he shows up. So thank you, Jesus, that I can just sit there and just wait and pray and, and the snot and all over the place through worship and repentance until finally because flesh and blood cannot go beyond the veil. So you can't just lay down and say, okay, God, I'm ready for you to show up. I'm going to sing one praise and worship song and your glory's going to come. Well, not really, you know, because, you know, in order to got true worship, you got to come naked and blameless and really search in your heart and he'll show you there's things that I I was repenting for this morning before he showed up while I was tarrying. I had to repent for some things that, you know, I really didn't even not even acknowledge at the time that, um, you know, that it, that it was sin, you know, because we fall short all the time. But when you want to get close to God and you want him to show up his glory, his manifest presence to come, you know, you have to be right with God. And so I'm addicted to the presence and the glory of God. So what I love about that is I'm constantly searching my heart and he's all, I'm constantly having to go in there and just really get right with him and just, you know, get rid of all that sin and darkness and, and then he shows up. So anyway, I just felt like I needed to share that today. But anyway, while I was in his presence and while I'm worshiping and, and he shows up and he's there, it reminded me of a scripture. So I was like, okay, well, I guess that's going to be the nugget of the day. So y'all ready? Where are we? We're three minutes. Okay, so let's come on over here. So the discipline of the Lord, uh, Hebrews 11, 12, and also, you know, there, uh, I don't know the address, but there's three that bear witness in heaven. And when I started reading the word of God, when I was 30 years old, I was on a quest. I'm like, I don't even know the Bible. I don't know anything about the Lord. And I've been knowing him since I'm nine years old. I never valued and never took the time to get to know the word. But then I, uh, God gave me a hunger and a thirst for the uh, for the word, and then when I when I got to the address, which I'll bring it on the next nugget, it says that there's three that bear witness. Um, I think it's in First John five. Some anyway, I'll bring it next time. But there's three that bear witness in heaven. It's God is a spirit. It's the Father. It's the Word and the Holy Spirit. And I was wait. I was like wait the Word. So Jesus, you know, I always looked at Jesus as, okay, well, he was, you know, he came from heaven and he lived for 33 years, but I never realized that he was the word. And when I found that out, it was like, oh my goodness. So the word always existed. So then it just made me fall in love with Jesus and the word all the more. So, um, and then John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And he was the light come down from heaven that shines in the hearts of men. And then we are the light of the world. We're the salt of the earth, you know. And uh, you don't hide a light under a basket. No, you 
lift it up high so that it gives light to all who are in the house. You see, so you're the light of the world. So let your little light so shine before men that they might see your good works and they glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, I'm getting so excited. Yes, praise you, God. I love you, Jesus. Woohoo. All right. Y'all ready? Come on, let's get to this nugget, guys and gals. All right. I am just having too much fun today. All right. I'm going to bring the word. Oh, slow down. Okay. So Hebrews 12 talks about the discipline of the Lord. So let's come over to Hebrews 12, uh, 4. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed while striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as sons. He's talking to the Laocedian church, okay? So he says, my son, do not despise the discipline from the Lord, nor grow weary when you are rebuked by him, for whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and scourges every son whom he receives. Endure discipline. God is dealing with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? If you are without discipline, of which everyone has partaken, then you are illegitimate, children, and not sons." Furthermore, we have had human fathers, and they corrected us, and we gave them reverence. So shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a short, a short time according to their own judgment, but he does so for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness." Now, no, oh, this is my favorite scripture that I have clung to for years. I want to share it with you right now. Okay, this is uh, Hebrews 12, 11, 11. Now, no discipline seems to be joyful at the present time, but grievous and painful. Yet afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. You see, when you're going through pain, when you're trying to learn how to live holy and God's constantly whipping your little hiney and, you know, trying to get you on that path of righteousness, rejoice because afterwards it's going to yield the peaceable fruit of, of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So if God is dealing with you and he's rebuking you, you need to rejoice and be grateful that because that means that you are a son and a daughter. Don't despise it. Say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep repenting. Keep enduring that conviction. And then one day you're going to be like, praise you God when you're not falling into that sin anymore and then you can rejoice because you've been trained by it so do not despise the discipline and chastening of the Lord do not grow weary when you are rebuked by him for whom the Lord loves he disciplines so if he's disciplining you then know that he loves you and he's doing that because you are a son and a daughter so if God's not dealing with you then maybe you need to say wow Wow, am I really a son or a daughter? Because if you're trying to press through and you're trying to get close to him, he's going to show you where you've fallen short. He's going to show you your sin. Jesus became a curse and he took the sin on the cross. But when we sin, there is consequences. So if you want to get close to God, you got to come out of agreement with that sin. you got a desire to be holy and to walk upright. Okay? And it's a process. But uh, God loves you. And then let me come over here, what I was uh, meditating on also. Where are we? Okay. Revelations 3.19. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Listen. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him 
and he with me. To him who overcomes will I grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on, on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So revelation of the day, here's Jesus. He's standing at the door of your heart right now. And he's saying, here I am. Open up the door. You hold the doorknob. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. He says, open up that door and let me in. And I will come and I will eat and sup with you all the days of your life. So is the Lord standing at the door of your heart right now? If so, he's knocking. Do you hear him? He says, if you hear my voice, he says, uh, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. If anyone, whosoever hears my voice. So not only is he knocking at the door of your heart, he's saying, here I am. Open up the door. I am your deliverer. I am your savior. I am your Lord. I am your healer. I am whatever you need. So open up the door by faith. Say, you know what, Jesus? I just opened up the door of my heart. I hear you. I know you've been reaching out to me for a long time. I've been resisting. I do repent. I repent to you, God. I've been trying to wait till I got my heart right. I've been trying to wait till I got cleaned up. I don't know what I've been waiting for, but he says, come as you are. He loves you right where you are, just like you are. All he wants you to do is open up the door and to let him in. And he says, if you will overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, he says, he will grant you to sit with him on his throne. Can I get a witness? So I love you today, sisters and brothers. And if God's dealing with you right now, you don't have to get cleaned up. You just got to come right as you are. Little by little, he will sanctify you. He will make you holy, but you just got to come. So he's knocking and he's saying, open up the door and let me in. He wants to dine with you forever and ever and ever. He is the the bread of life come down from heaven. Jesus is the word. He is the bread of life. Amen. He And you know the scripture, our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Jesus is the bread of life that came down from heaven. He's the word, the bread. He came down from heaven. Open up the Bible and fellowship with the word who is Jesus. He's got a little nugget for you today. So I love to open up the Bible at random and I guarantee you go dust it off your shelf. And if you want, God loves when we play games with him, you know, you can open up the Bible anywhere at random and say, Lord, you got a word for me. Just open it up wherever your eye gate goes on. He will speak to you. So anyway, I love you. Oh, man, this one's 13 minutes. Wow. Okay, I love you. I bless you. And I hope that you open up the door of your heart. Open up that door now. Let Jesus in and endure that discipline so that you might become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. A disciple disciplines himself to know the word who is Jesus, yields himself to Holy Spirit and allows the Holy Spirit to little by little sanctify you, set, consecrate you, set you apart, make you holy little by little, layer by layer, so that you could be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I love you. Be blessed, sisters and brothers friends and family. Stay tuned for the next nugget. I love you. Peace out.